Welcome everyone, I'm Tong Wei Ren from Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Today I'm going to present our paper on analysis of first party cookie exfiltration due to CNM redirections. This is a paper advised by my advisor, Professor Lorenzo Di Carli from Worcester Polytechnic Institute and Professor Drew Davison from University of Kansas, co-worked with Alexander Waitman from University of Kansas. In this paper, we perform a large scale analysis of the impact of advertising related CNM redirections on cookie propagation. Our data confirmed that a non negligible fraction of the Alexa 10,000 websites perform such redirections consistent with prior studies. We show that in a number of sites, the deployment of first party redirections cause sensitive cookies to lead to third party advertising domains. We also find that the ability of blocking these exfiltrations vary between browsers. So what's CNAME cloaking? By using CNAME redirections, the third party domain gets cloaked as a subdomain of a first party or trusted third party, and thus has the same powers as the true first party or trusted third party. This is called CNAME cloaking, which is a problem that has been observed in the last years. For example, ad.advertise.com will be blocked by the block list. But using CNAME cloaking can let it pass the block list and successfully delivers the advertisement to the example website. In this example, the example website is a first party domain and ad.advertise.com is a third party subdomain. It uses a first party subdomain, which is ad.example.com to hide itself. Thus, ad.advertise.com is also a cloaked domain. The same redirection here redirects a first party subdomain to a different domain. We call it a first party redirection. And we call advertisers root domain third party domain. Synonym cloaking is already a problem that many people pay attention on. And there are already some studies on its spread. However, compared to the existing studies, we are most care about the impact of synonym cloaking on cookie exfiltration by blurring the origin-based policy, which is a crucial part of web, uh, website security, such that the motivations for our work include three points. First, to understand the trade of cinema cloaking use, use over the past several months. Second, to supplement the lack of analysis of the effect of cinema cloaking on browser cookie policies. Third, to understand the actual effects of existing mitigations against cinema cloaking on cookie exfiltration. We collected our data in both June and December 2020 using a HPC cluster in University of Kansas. We used our automated tool built by using Singularity containers and Selenium to visit Alexa top 10,000 websites. And for each website, we visited the homepage for 30 seconds and stored all data into MongoDB by using Medium proxy. We targeted Alexa top 10,000 websites, minus the websites that failed to return any content or returned HTTP error. By the end, we successfully visited around 9,500 websites in June and 9,600 websites in December. The below table is a summary of our data set. For both June and December, we collected more than one and a half million requests or responses. And there are almost 190,000 first party redirections in June day set and 200,000 in December day set. However, these first party redirections have various destination domains. So we performed a filtering to get all first party redirections that high possibly belong to advertisers or trackers. We did this filtering based on the advertiser or tracker domain lists we extract from some public popular ad or track block lists. And finally, showing in the last row of this table, we got around 28,000 redirections for June data set 
and 46,000 rejections for December data set. Like the filtering we did before, we are most concerned about redirections whose destination domains are advertisers or trackers, such that to get accurate, accurate and comprehensive information about the destination domains of filtered redirections, we did the uh, domain classification. We extract the old source and the destination domain pairs and did the manually domain checking. Then we divided all first party redirections into three categories. We tag redirections whose source domain and destination domain belong to a same organization as same organization. We tag redirections whose destination domain belongs to an advertiser or tracker as external ad or tracking. And we tag all other redirections as other third parties. Below two figures show the results of a categorization of first party redirections by category of destination domain. And we can see external ad or tracking slightly increased between June and December from 509 to 513. And the same organization decreased from 416 to 249. The total number among June and December of source domains is around 2,800. And there are around 1,500 overlapping domains between two sets. And the total number among June and December of destination domains, which is cloaked domains, is 101. And there are 31 overlapping domains between two sets. After finishing the domain classification, in order to learn more about how frequently the cookies are transmitted to external ad or tracking third party domains, we did our second analysis, cookie lifecycle analysis. We mainly focus on cross domain cookie transmission. Cookies may be set by the real first party domain, but sent to the cloaked third party domain. Like the figure we show here, the cookie is set by the www.ingbank.pl but sent to the uh, adocean.pl by using selenium cloaking. We analyzed the database by taking each cookie key value pair set by the real first party as a unit to investigate across domain cookie transmissions. In total, we found 89 cookies in the June state set and 108 cookies in December state set. By classifying the destination domains of cross-domain cookie transmissions, we got below two, two figures. And we can see external ad or tracking increased between June and December from 27 to 53, which is almost the 50% of 108 cookies we found in December. And the same organization also increased from 11 to 20. In order to gain insights on cross-domain cookie transmission beyond each website's homepage, we did a more deeply manual cookie analysis. We randomly selected 62 uh, websites among those found to perform redirections towards domains in the external AdWord tracking category, created the user accounts on each of them and recorded authenticated browsing uh, sessions. After that, we located all candidate cookies that are set by the real first party, but transmitted to the cloaked third party, falling in the external ad or tracking category. We then analyzed the each candidate cookie to determine if it is to be considered sensitive. Sensitive cookies are cookies which store information pertaining to the user's identity and or authentication. We divide sensitive cookies into three kinds of cookies, information cookie, authentication cookie, and the identity cookie. Information cookie contains users some information like name, email. Deleting authentication cookie will cause the website to ask users to re-authenticate themselves like re-entering password. And the deleting identity cookie will cause the user to log back in by confirming the user's identity without re-entering password. 
This table shows the results we got from manual cookie analysis. In total, there are nine websites in June's analysis and 10 websites in December's analysis exhibited cross-domain sensitive cookie transmissions, including 46 key value pairs. And there are five overlapping websites between two analyses. Besides, authentication cookie is a kind of a cookie we pay more attention on. It's used to authenticate client requests and maintain session information, such that the user doesn't need to re-log into the account on each visit. And there are five websites in June's analysis and seven websites in December's analysis exhibited cross-domain authentication cookie transmissions, including 15 key value pairs. And there are three overlapping websites between two analyses. To be clear, all cookies we mentioned here are transmitted to third-party advertisers or trackers. The results tell us that the CNAME cloaking does can be used to exfiltrate sensitive cookies. In addition, we also did the browser block list evaluation. We selected the Safari and the Brave browsers as uh, these have advertised their ability to prevent CNAME cloaking. We evaluated the effectiveness of them uh, in their ability to prevent uh, cookie exfiltration by visiting and log into each of the seven websites exhibiting cross-domain authentication cookie transmission from December's analysis and the recorded browser sessions. The results show that when using Safari, two out of seven instances of exfiltration were blocked. However, when using Spree, six out of seven instances of exfiltration were blocked. In summary, our data confirmed that a non-negligible fraction of the Alexa 10,000 websites perform CNAME redirections, and uh, there is one decrease uh, between June and December. We show that a number of sites from six to nine between June and December exfiltrate cookies from 30% of 89 to 49% of 108 cookies to add or tracking third parties on their homepage. And the sensitive cookies, totally 46 cookies in 14 of 62 websites are exfiltrated to third parties beyond the homepage. Besides, we also find that the ability of blocking these exfiltrations vary between browsers. For conclusions, based on the results of our analysis, we got some security implications. First, CNAME cloaking appears to be a feasible means for advertisers to evade block lists when they have the cooperation of first parties. And third parties and first parties are willing to collaborate in ways that blur rate based security. However, the exfiltration of authentication cookies may open the door to impersonation and uh, account takeover, extend the first party attack surface. Besides, CNAME cloaking as an aggregate phenomenon has undesirable implications for user security and privacy. Thanks everyone for your listening. There are all contents I want to present today. Feel free to ask questions.